blood and blood cancer disorders and you want to take a second opinion or you want to ask about how my treatment modality is going on this is a platform which Fortis has provided for all of us in the country and in the world so that the best healthcare can be delivered to patients. So we have got a couple of questions today and we are going to start discussing with that. The first question is what is the treatment for high hemoglobin and high red blood cells? So when we talk about hemoglobin, so understand the purpose of a hemoglobin is to carry oxygen. Understanding is very, very important in knowing the cause for anything which is high or low. The country which is obsessed with numbers, we always think that higher the marks, higher the better outcomes. Higher the hemoglobin, higher the things. And higher the platelets, the better will be the outcome. But that's not true. Okay. So we take breath from nose. It goes to the lungs. From the lungs, the oxygen is being delivered to red blood cells. Red blood cells goes and circulates within kidney and the brain. And kidney senses how much oxygen is coming to you. Okay. Is that clear? So why I told you this, the problem could be in the nose, problem it could be in the lungs, problem could be in the circulation, problem could be in the kidneys. And one more cause could be the blood cells have become terrorist and they have started forming more and more and more. So now if you have a high hemoglobin, the first thing which we ask, do you smoke? So if you have been smoking, smoking leads to more carbon dioxide and less of oxygen delivery, body senses less of hemoglobin and less of oxygen it starts producing red blood cells so it's multiple the oxygen has to be multiplied by hemoglobin is equal to the delivery so if the delivery is not good and the oxygen is less increase the red blood cells so do you have smoking history of smoking if the hemoglobin is high then that could be because of the snoring smoking what is the normal hemoglobin in males it has to be well controlled between 13 to 17.5 and in females it has to be 12 to 16.5 anything less anything more is abnormal the first thing we have spoken is smoking is the patient smoking and if yes then you have to quit smoking second commonest cause in indian population is snoring snoring when we say karate bharna what happens in the night there's a flap mechanism which has happened and the oxygen cannot be delivered into the heart into the lungs Okay, through our religious literatures, we say the breaths are limited. Whosoever believes in religion, we always say breaths are limited. Means it could be thousand, it could be hundred thousand, it could be one million, it could be billion. But what is happening is in the night when you sleep, the body's mechanism is heart does not pump at 120 per minute. It only pumps at 60. Okay, when you start snoring, the heart starts pumping more and more faster and faster. So what happens? Your breath and the heart which is there gets limited. So guys, people who snore has got a problem of obstructive sleep apnea that they wake up in the morning tired. They fall asleep anywhere in the world they sleep. They can sit and they can sleep. Whether it be car, whether it be office. And throughout the day, they are tired. And their hemoglobin goes up. And we feel that's better. But it is wrong. It is wrong to have a high hemoglobin and these symptoms. This is the manifestation of what is called as obstructive sleep apnea. So the second most common cause of high hemoglobin is after smoking, snoring, double S, SS, smoking and snoring. Third common condition is kidney disorders. Either there's a tumor which is producing more of the factors which is increasing the hemoglobin or your lung problem is there, you have got COPD. So after ruling out these problems, we go to a hematological problem, what, what is called as polycythemia vera. Polycythemia. Cells explanatory term means the red blood cells have increased in number and why it is called a precancerous condition. So you need not be worried because out of 100 patients which visits our OPD, 95% people will have a history of smoking, snoring and will not have a cancerous condition. So understanding this fact is very, very important. So if your hemoglobin is 20, so your hemoglobin is 20 means you have to have an evaluation done. In the evaluation, so one thing which comes the first, complete blood count after getting you hydrated. If you are well hydrated, get a complete blood count. In my OPDs, you will understand the word complete blood count more often than not. So you need not be doing HB, TLC and plated. Remember the word called complete blood count, CBC, CBC, okay? Is that rememberable? So remember that. 
once you get a CBC done, the next test is serum erythropoietin, serum EPO levels, then an ABG, arterial blood gas analysis, and the next test which you do is of course what is called a JAK2 for ruling out polycythemia vera, which is a precancerous condition. If the JAK2 is positive, which is positive in 95% of people, you might be suffering from a precancerous condition. So, do I need to be worried about it? I mean, is it like it's a cancer? Do I be worried? The answer to that is no. Why? First, understand polycythemia vera. It is the uncontrolled proliferation of red blood cells. When it's an uncontrolled proliferation of red blood cells, what happens? What can happen? Think. The red blood cells goes into veins and arteries. So we have got veins and arteries, which we see blue, blue on our hands is veins. So if the red blood cells counts are high or platelet counts are high, they can get clogged. These vessels can get clogged. And when they get clogged, you can get, get a stroke. If they get clogged in the brain, if you get a clogging in the heart or get this blood gets stopped in the heart, you get heart attack. So high hemoglobin is a never a good feature. It has to be brought down to 15 at any cost. Okay. And what we say high is in males is 17.5 and in females it's 16.5. What do we doctor do then? If the hemoglobin is high, what doctor does a bone marrow test after doing a JAK2 test and confirm a diagnosis of polycythemia vera. After that, they prescribe you what is called ecosprin, baby ecosprin, 75 milligram to keep your blood under check so that it does not clot. And if you have hypertension, you are more than 60 years of age, you have got high cholesterol, what you do is give hydroxyurea. You give hydroxyurea tablet to bring down the blood counts. Hydroxyurea is like a pan bomb. You give, red blood cells will come down, platelets will come down, WBC will come down. But it should not come down less than 3000, then you have to stop. Okay. So it has to be given under supervision of a doctor. So. The commonest thing is if your hemoglobin is high, please go to your doctor and ask and evaluate yourself. The answer lies in evaluation. That's why we say you should go to a doctor so that you don't have to go to a doctor. Okay. So that you remain fit. I have, hope this answers your question. If you have got any other query regarding this, please send it to us and revert back to us with your exact CBC report where we can comment to you what needs to be done. Second question is levogen XT safe for supplementary iron deficiency? So we last time spoke of iron deficiency. People when they have an iron deficiency, we need to know why that is happening. I will retreat my point. Are you not eating? Are you not absorbing or you are losing? Levogen XT is good enough tablet which has to be taken in such a way that two hours before and two hours after you have to avoid milk, curd, green leafy vegetables, calcium and tea because it stops the absorption of iron and iron tablet has to be chosen which is safe to your stomach. If you are able to tolerate levogen, please continue with that. If you are not able to tolerate, 20 to 20 percent Indian people don't tolerate oral iron. They get constipation, they get diarrhea, they get black tongue. Okay. If you get that, please go for IV iron which is as safe as anything in the world today. So this is what we need to understand. Okay. So next question, third question is Ankur asked that is TSH, TSH? TSH is 350. TSH is 350 and his age is 31. Please suggest. So TSH, when we say 350 Ankur, every lab will have a different range. So if that is within the range, then it is okay. But the moment the TSH is 350 and my lab report is 20, then I think you require a thyroxine. So first, what do I suggest to you is, please flip your pages of your report. See on a right hand side corner, what is the normal range given of TSH. And once we know what is the normal range of TSH, then we can tell you that thyroxine is the good way to go ahead according to your weight. So what we need is a weight, of course, and the normal range in the in the report so that we can better guide you and your what are the symptoms you are facing it please do let us know about it okay so that will serve you the best next question is what is my my father is he says my father is 70 years old and his tlc is high okay his tlc is high it's very common no? so we are going going to live longer we're going to live longer because 
dengue and malaria are coming down heart attacks are being well controlled and diabetes and blood pressure are getting controlled by cardiologist very well so what is happening there your wbc count is high please flip on the report and see what component of wbc is high so wbc count is high when we say 20000 is high yes it is high because the 10000 is the common cut off limit 4000 to 10000 is normal so your wbc is 20000 and there's a 80 percent lymphocytes which is very common hemoglobin is 14 platelet is 2 lakhs what do you do then is it alarming the answer to that is it is alarming so any time you have a high wbc count with a lymphocytosis means lymphocytes are more white blood cells has got component in your report c there's neutrophil written there's lymphocyte written there's monocyte basophil eosinophil written in this case the lymphocytes are more 80 percent it means you might be suffering from CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The moment the cancer comes in at the age of 70, we are all afraid. We take a back seat, isn't that? Because we are worried. Now, I would say, let's not be worried about it. Why? Why? The simple is, in CLL, 80% of people don't require treatment. Amazing. Okay? Surprising. And out of the world because doctor is saying I have a cancer and I don't require a treatment in CLL only six condition warrants treatment understand that if your WBC is getting doubled within six months you require treatment if you have got fever weight loss night sweats you require treatment your lymph nodes which are alternative channels for carrying the protein those increases in size you require treatment if your spleen which is on the left side of the body under the ribs, if that increases in size, you require a treatment and your hemoglobin starts coming down and the platelet starts coming down, you require treatment. In CLL, you have got many, many treatments which are available. So once you have father has got high TLC, what I would suggest to you is get a test called flow cytometry and fish for CLL panel because we know that all males in this world does not look the same way and they do not behave the same way. Why? Because of the genetics. So we have gone to such an extent into the genetics that you require the genetic test to know which medications will be required if you require that. Means genetics will determine if all of us sitting in this room tomorrow have a CLL, every single person will have a different treatment modality which is called as personalized medicine by virtue of genetics. So you require fish. If you eat fish, you remember fish testing for CLL which will give you answer for 11Q, 13Q, 12, 11, 12, 13 and 17. So just remember the good, bad, ugly, 11, 12, 13 in that order, bad, good, bad, ugly and good and 17Q is the ugliest. Remember that way. 13Q is good. Okay. So don't worry about it. So after doing that test, please revert back to us so that we know what is happening and please keep on getting your blood test done every two months so that we know when to intervene and when not to intervene. Because in CLL, there is a major uh, uh, scientific breakthrough which has happened. From a pan chemotherapy, we have moved on to oral chemotherapies and that is helping the people to live life with an oral chemotherapy itself. So that is the beauty of a CLL treatment that in today's world, and as we speak in 2019, we are moving ahead from from a chemotherapy to immunotherapy and immunotherapy to oral therapies. Majority of things, if you see in past three, four years, the thirst has been on oral therapies to make life easier. And CLL do tends to struck at the age of eight, at the age seventh and eighth decade as people are living, living longer and longer and longer. So I hope this will answer you. And this will also settle the anxieties in the family that you might be having a cancer and still you don't require a treatment until unless you earn your treatment by looking at these combinations. So what is the, the thought process today? If you feel weak, fatigued and tired, please do go ahead and get the complete blood count test. You can share those reports to us on, on the Facebook and the results can be interpreted if there's anything which is abnormal. And slowly and steadily, the population needs to get educated about interpreting their own things to know what is normal and what is abnormal. And that is how 
we will be able to deliver good health care because the patient's participation in good health care is equally important as the doctor's initiation of treatment and giving the best treatment. So I would urge people to come up with their queries regarding the blood, blood and blood cancers, which includes lymphomas, myelomas, myelodysplastic syndrome, CLL and other things. So with this, we come to an end of today's session. If you have more questions, please do let us know on the Facebook. We'll meet you next week, Tuesday, same time, discussing more about blood and blood cancers. And probably we'll next time pick up one disease, which is very, very peculiar, or what is called myelodysplastic syndrome or MDS. So if you have got low hemoglobin, low platelet, low TLC in combination, or you have a low TLC, low platelet in any combination, please do come on to the Facebook, get attached to this program of answering so that we can answer your questions and across the country, across the world, you can get the best opinion. Thank you everybody for patient here.